Hello everybody, it's me, Tonic TZW, and it is update day October 2023. This one is just called Whale Hunting, and uh, you'll see why as we get into this. Now, I didn't have a chance to go through all of the patch notes in its entirety, but it is once again um, a big update for October, because not only have we got arpeggio and british battle cruisers coming in but later in the month we've got the halloween event and obviously next month it's going to be black friday so had a look in the store today and we can see that they've got the battleship big crate in there as expected the drop chances are extremely low and we'll talk about that a little bit more but we've also got a new arpeggio bundle with a few ships and four new commanders there is the lineup for the british battle cruisers we've got tier four to tier seven available in early access but you are going to have to grind all the way up for the tier eight ship at tier four we've got the tiger at tier five we bring in renown and we'll keep skipping forward through these ships. The only thing that I've noticed about these ships is very much like the German secondary line as we click over to the tier six Rook in that they have got very, very big guns, and um, but they don't have the armor to match it. They do all appear to have an engine boost on them, which is going to make them reasonably fast. And obviously they do have torpedoes. So that is going to make the game going ahead a little bit more interesting and it's adding a new dynamic into the game which can be quite refreshing the two arp ships that we've got um both appeared to be based on the miyoko japanese cruiser but they do have slightly different um sets of specifications to them um with what their capabilities are so again we might see a couple of different gameplay styles develop here and there is also an arp version of the misashi to go with those Moving on to the commanders, we've got Yamato there who gives us gun traverse speed and reduced dispersion. I think that's going to increase the sniper builds for the big Japanese battleships. And she does have a special trait here for range and um, a trait very similar to Azula, New Jersey with increased damage over 10 kilometers. For Misashi, she's got um, reduced dispersion while the spotter plane is active. Um, that's a bit like Arthas the Cold, I think, isn't it? And it's got reduced AP shell fuse time, so that might be increasing the chance of citadels. There's going to be a sweet spot there between gun range and um, the penetration value, I think. Nachi, we've got cruiser, re cruiser speed and uh, reduce rudder shift time, more agile cruisers, and also we're going to get some better AP shots coming out of these cruisers with penetration multiplier and reduced um, deflection. With Haguro, um, we've got a greater chance of causing fire and increased range. And then her special skill appears to be armor penetration of the HE shells plus the amount of damage she does. I think there are going to be some Suzuyas that are going to be causing some nasty business out there. But we've got a replay here for you as we go through a few of the notes that I made on the costs of achieving everything. If you've got very, very deep pockets you can have all of this and more now i sat down and went through the store and um, i had a look at the individual prices of things plus the prices of doubloon packages to see where um where the best value for things is with this update certainly we'll start with um the british battle cruisers now, if you look at the crate description of the British Battle Cruisers, it does have a guaranteed um, drop chance on those crates. However, it is restricted by tier. So that means if you buy your first 20 crates, you would be guaranteed 
to get the tier 4 tiger. Now it will give you either the tier 4 tiger or the tier 5 renown I think it said in the description. But um, if we go through um, the mechanics as I understand them, you will be guaranteed to get the tier 4 tiger within the first 20 crates that you buy. So even if you buy 19 and don't get it on the 20th, you will be guaranteed to get the tiger. Then for the renown, you will be guaranteed to drop that tier 5 battle cruiser within the next 20 crates. So again, you're looking there at a maximum of 40 crates to get the tier 4 and the tier 5. It changes up a little bit for the tier 6 Rook in that it will guarantee you the ship within 30 crates and then it changes up again for the tier 7 Hawk in that the guaranteed ship drop is within 40 crates. So that means to be guaranteed all of the early access ships from tier 4 to tier 7, you would have to purchase a maximum of 110 crates. Now with the discount on the 10 crate bundle, that would still mean that you would have to buy 74,250 doubloons. And doing a quick bit of maths on the uh, available doubloon purchases available, you would have to be buying one package of 47,000 and one package of 30,000, um, which I'll do it in British pounds because that's my local currency. The 47,000 doubloons would cost you 109 pounds and 99 pence, and the 30,000 doubloons would cost you 73 pounds and 99 pence. So to guarantee yourself Yourself, four ships early access British battle cruisers that would cost you a maximum of 183 pounds and 98 pence that's a lot of money you know you're looking at what 45 pounds British pounds per ship there but then we came on to the arpeggio and there were a couple of things to note in the arpeggio um, store items in that the big bundle does not include everything that is available in the store. It does give you two ships. It does give you four commanders. However, it doesn't give you... Um, for example, the Masashi that is sold separately, and the Masashi Bund, uh, the, sorry, the Masashi Camo is also sold separately. But strangely, it does give you the Yamato Camo in that bundle. And then, if you look at purchasing the Masashi itself, although it appears in the preview with the camo on it, it does not appear from the store items the way they're listed underneath that the camo is included in the package so if you want to have the camo on the ship it would appear that you would have to buy the two separate items so if you want to own everything that there is in the um, arpeggio bundle you could buy it all separately and that would come to a total of 80,000 doubloons and those packages would be a 47,000 doubloons, 30,000 doubloons and 5,625 doubloons for a total price of 198 pounds and 97 pence. However, if you wanted to get everything that is part of this arpeggio release, you would have to buy the big bundle, the Masashi, and then, based on what I can see in the store and on the screen, you would also have to buy the Masashi skin. And that would bring the doubloons price down by 10,000 doubloons to a total of 70,000 doubloons. Now, to pick up 70,000 doubloons, you would have to be buying a 47,000 doubloon package, a 20,500 doubloons package, and a 2,750 doubloons package, which would have a total price of £171.37. 
I know there are people out there who have got very deep pockets. I know we do have whales in this community. And I know that people are more than happy to spend this much money on the content. And uh, one of the things that a lot of people like to do is to have that day one daily access to the campaign ship and they buy out the entire campaign which costs 27,250 doubloons which um, the best package there you're going to be buying 30,000 because you can't buy a specific number of doubloons and my TV is about to turn itself off in 50 seconds <laughs> So, if you want to go all in and be absolutely harpooned like a big fat whale by Wargaming, then you are going to be spending £73.99 to unlock the entire campaign and get your hands on the anchorage. So the whale cost for the entire content of this campaign. For Arpeggio, it's £171.37. For the British Battlecruisers, it's £183.99. And for the campaign buyout, it's £73.99. Now, honestly, put your hand in your pocket and hold tight onto your wallet. Because the combined cost of all of that based on my calculations and my maths is normally quite reasonable is 429 pound and 35 pence and that is absolutely ridiculous but it looks like we are going to see some new dynamics of play coming into the game with the japanese ships and these new commanders as well as the new ships because um, I think premium is the place to be and sadly it seems to be turning more and more in that direction and I know a lot of people have said that World of Tanks was the same that World of Warships PC was the same and I think we are gradually seeing that transition on console these are not micro purchases £429 is about as much as I have to live off in a month you know to put food on the table and petrol in the car and clothes on my back and um, i don't see how this model is sustainable for wargaming and the more i see it happening in game the more i see it like the wolf of wall street where it is a pump and dump they pump this game to make as much as they possibly can out of it because they know that there is a cliff somewhere in the horizon where the player base is going to get wise to these practices if they aren't already and they are going to dump this game and find something that isn't going to cost them a kidney every five weeks with an update now with the um, campaign reward shipped obviously in uh, the last update we had rental ships and they were charging us doubloons to rent a ship and I'm wondering if this is also a new trend that is coming from Wargaming they drop us three rental ships a lot of people drop real money on purchasing the doubloons to get those ships and play them and then they were collecting data and looking at the feedback and it did seem that the anchorage was very much getting the most positive feedback amongst the player base and lo and behold it is that ship that is dropped in as the campaign reward so is this a new method of working out which ships wargaming are going to drop in for the campaign reward what we do know is that there are still two other ships out there in the wild that were available for renting that we haven't seen yet so will they come up for global xp will they come up for doubloons or will we see them in later campaigns because the work has obviously already been done otherwise they wouldn't have been available for testing so that's an interesting angle that i found on that aspect of rental ships and the campaign reward one thing that i would like to say is rather than those rentals being available for doubloons only um, i would like to see the opportunity for the player base to have access to those rentals through currency that can be earned in game either 
global XP or for normal silver credits because I do think that that was a bit of money grab asking people to pay real money to get access to ships because those guys have paid a thousand doubloons and now they're going to pay again for the campaign rewards to get access to that ship um or an alternative would be that if you rent the ship that comes becomes the campaign reward that you actually get a reduction in the cost of that ship by the price that you pay um, I know I was out in the Darren again, and that's because a few people have been making slightly derogatory comments about me on Facebook. Um, I might post those on a later date and include them in a later video. But for those people that are out there that are doubters about whether or not I play a destroyer in a certain way, or whether I actually do get good games in it, yes I do. They aren't all good, but that was a good one. And... Uh, there aren't too many bad ones. And if you want to um, poke fun at me on Facebook, drop me a message here on PSN, or you can look me up on uh, Xbox app as well, and I'll drop you my stats for that ship, and you can have a look for yourself. So there we go. That's my take on everything. Don't forget, smash the like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you're going to buy anything in this update. And don't forget, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Goodbye.